Welcome to the Happy Workaholic Podcast. I'm your host, Kellyanne Gorman. Over the past 20 years, I've worked in beauty, luxury, corporate, and service-driven industries. I created the opportunity in these careers and in my own businesses that allowed me to travel the world, experience once-in-a-lifetime events, and build brands while providing my expertise to clients all around the globe. Life is short, and when you're given a second chance, you better believe I'm going to take it, celebrate it, and share it with you. This show is intended to elevate your mind, upgrade your business, enhance your life, and become part of a positive and uplifting community. If you are ready to take your business and life to that next level you deserve to be at, this is the show for you. Inspiration, motivation, and determination are what got me to where I am today. Tune in every week to hear from myself, other entrepreneurs, professional patients, small business owners, and fellow podcasters who will be featured on the show. I'm here to remind you to work hard, share your story, follow your dreams, and never, ever give up. Thanks for taking the time to subscribe to the Happy Workaholic Podcast. Today's episode starts now. Hello, hello, and welcome back to a brand new show. Today's episode has been recorded specifically for the professional patient series. These are episodes that will showcase everyday health stories from the patient, caregivers, the medical professionals, advocates, as well as the holistic healers. Now, if you're wondering why such a series exists, it's because I myself was diagnosed with two diseases four years ago that a year ago I found out I actually never had. So by using my platform, by using the show, this is the reason why I started this podcast in the first place. I'm able to share the stories of others now. So if this is the type of content that you are searching for, that somebody that you know is searching for, send them on over here and tune into today's episode. And here comes today's guest. So today I'm so excited because I have Amber Malcolm on the show and she and I met on Facebook, shocker, on the interwebs. And Amber, where did we meet? We met, I think, in a Facebook group, right? I, you know, it's funny. I don't remember. I don't yeah, remember it was either. Somewhere. I know, it's somewhere. I know, it's somewhere. I know. And so um, we connected and I remember the first thing I did, actually, maybe it was something about podcasting. I don't even know. So I looked on your profile and I was very intrigued because I saw that you were an attorney and then you went through your own health journey and now you have this business because of that. And then I think that's when I messaged you. I'm like, oh my God, can we have a conversation? Because I am representing myself in six cases and I now have a business because I went through this crazy health story, and I'm like, please come on my show. <laughs> yes, now I remember. Yes, and I, I loved connecting. You know, it's hard to find survivors of these things sometimes that are willing to talk about it, and um, and so it was so nice to finally have that connection um, because the disease I had, there's only a 10% chance of survivor survival, so there's not survivors groups for me. There's not really, you know, like the what's the cancer walk mm. and all that they have their support system but mm-hmm. there's, there's really not one now can you start off by sharing a little bit of like we I want to hear your backstory I want you to share your backstory and then symptoms that you were having and then how you found out your diagnosis and then I even remember you guys before we hit record we we're actually talking a little bit about how timing is just everything we were supposed to record this months ago I mean like three or four months ago and then you were busy in a play and then you had um, is relapse the right word or you got sick again, right? Yeah, I got sick again. It wasn't quite a full blown relapse, but yeah, I had to take about three months off to, in order to prevent a full blown relapse. And I'm so glad you're here with us today. So share with us a little bit about your previous career and how you started and kind of came out of this health journey as of right now. About 10 years ago, I, I joke I'm a recovering attorney. I was still yeah. a practicing attorney back in that day. And um, I was actually doing really well. I was just kind of bebopping along in life. I was, you know, I was, what, I think I was about 26, 27 or something like that. So, you know, I just thought I was invincible. My shit did not stink, that's for sure. And um, I became pregnant with my second child. And it, it started off as what's called hyperemesis. Um, and it, and I, I joke that it's bulimia, not to make fun of bulimia, but I just threw up all the time involuntarily. Mm-hmm. I mean, it didn't matter if it was ice cream or salad or water. I lost 80 pounds during my pregnancy. It was just constant vomiting. And because of that, I had to be have pick lines placed. And for some reason that we've never figured out, my immune system basically just kind of quit working. So the pick lines 
would lead to bacterial infections and that I'd be in the hospital for two or three weeks getting that, you know, taken care of and then I'd be back out for a few weeks and then I'd be back in. But the last time I was in, it was actually a fungal infection that and, um, those are much, much more dangerous and serious than the bacterial infections. There's actually two, there's only two antifungal medications and no one had any idea how safe they were while you were pregnant. Mm. So we decided, yeah, it was so scary. And so we decided to go ahead and deliver my daughter two months early. She was, uh, had a due date of September and she was born in July and she's my healthiest child. Spoiler alert. She came out perfect. <laughs> absolutely perfect. Uh, but we went ahead and delivered her because we had no idea if this crossed the placenta. And while the infection was in my body, it took part of the site in my right eye. I had tumors growing, like basically fungal abscesses growing all over my chest and it was damaging my heart and obviously you don't want this happening to an infant mm -hmm. and so we went ahead and delivered her and um then I went on and it was just months in and out and nobody could figure out why this kept happening nobody could figure out you know why my body wouldn't fight this fungus um and so it was just it was almost like a year of medication and doctors and hospitals and all of that and finally I just went I don't think they know I really don't think they know. I'm just going to start living a healthier lifestyle. So my husband and I bought a small farm and goats and chickens. And I had, I had no idea. There are so many kinds of chickens out there. It's, it's really fascinating. Oh, my God. And uh, we had all the big fluffy dogs. You know, everything. We had everything. And while I was cleaning my old farmhouse, I would, you know, use the cleaners you buy at your store. And uh, the fumes, the smell would just run me out of the house. And I thought... Well, this is stupid. We're supposed to be living healthier. What am I doing spraying these chemicals? And I got to researching and I was just flabbergasted because there's no regulations on cleaning products. Mm -hmm. And most of the cleaners that you know, I'm sure if you keep them under your sink, that's where all my cleaners used to go. Mm -hmm. if you're under your sink, almost every, we know, we know that we know that almost every cleaner on the market has known carcinogen. And so it's really scary because you're breathing this, you're putting this on your skin, you're washing your clothes with it. And I thought, man, I wonder if any of this contributed to my illness. And um, you never know. And nobody, of course, will really ever give you any definitive answer. But I can tell you that since I started making those products, like you said, I had a briefly re kind of almost relapse uh, last fall. But other than that, I have been very healthy and able to work and grow my business like crazy. That's incredible. Now, when you said pick lines, you said plural. So you had more than yeah. one at one time? No, not at the same time. Oh, okay. You know, remove it. Once I got the infection, and then once the infection was cleared up, they'd place another one. I had three, but they were consecutive. Oh, okay. I was going to, I've never heard of that. So for those of you listening, if you're not familiar with what a pick line is, it's for those of us that have invisible veins or veins that are very difficult to get to, and we need to get an IV place. So a pick line, I actually had that procedure when I was in the hospital for my, my first day. That was nine beautiful days. And I was on so many IV steroids at that time that they couldn't get the pick line to go through. And here's a funny story. I had 10 med students watching. The doctor, the pick line nurse came in and he's like, do you mind if I have some med students watch? They're doing the rotations. I'm like, sure. And my anxiety medicine never came. I was freaking out that I was going to be awake for that because it's pretty painful. And... It's not comfortable and they strap you down. Yeah, they put the foam under the neck and it's like such a process. And like if you're already like locked up in a hospital, like the last thing you want to do, you know, like it's just another added stress. So they give you anxiety medicine. Mine never came on time. It never kicked in. So I was just living my best life, like all strapped down with 10 med students watching. Two and a half hours later, they mm -hmm. gave up. It wouldn't go through. And so that's why I got a port. So I got a metal port for my chemo treatments because they were like, no, like you have to have a port. There's no way we can give you this drug if you don't, if we don't have a way to get, get it to. Because when I was in the hospital for nine days, I had 14 IVs, 14. Uh -huh. It was nuts. And for us that like, that's like kind of common. Like we're just like, yeah, I'd pick yeah. lines and this and that. Yeah, like that's about right. <laughs> it's just like our normal way of speaking. And somebody else that hasn't gone through what we've gone through, they're like, what the hell are you even talking about? Like, that's so serious. And when you were talking about your, um, your firstborn, 
when I had an endoscopy a couple weeks ago, you can hear everybody's conversation. You're waiting to get drugged before you go in for the procedure. And the girl next to me was talking about her micro preemie who was born at one pound, 16 ounce, something insane. Like she had her, I think, four or five months. And she's like the healthiest of all of her children. So it's just incredible, like how medicine, you know, just like the time that we live in right now, like what medicine and like eating healthy and just like everything combined, like it's just crazy how miracles can happen. It's just, I love hearing stories like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's always amazing. I too am switching over to a lot more of a natural product line some things I haven't yet I will admit like I I'm still using like um like a bleach kind of spray for my tub but I am getting like soy candles I have my oils you know it's really hard to transition and expensive too but if you do it in baby steps I feel like it really is like the best in my opinion like way to go because it's very overwhelming especially when you're coming out of you know something health related either you or somebody in your family you're trying to you know change everything at once and then it's like so stressful because it's like an overload you know overload yep exactly well and you know there's a lot of you know greener or cleaner products get a bad rap because i think over the past 20 or 30 years the green products or the cleaner products were sometimes less effective or Mm -hmm. they just weren't as good as the real deal and stuff. Now, I think that's definitely changed probably in the past five years or so, but yeah, it was like, okay, I want to, I want a better product, but then all the quote unquote cleaner products were the crap. (laughs) They just didn't work. And so, yeah, it can be overwhelming to even know where to start. Yeah, it's so true. Now, going back to your story, when you started going through your health journey, how many doctors did you see? Like, did you, were you in a situation where you had to get second opinions, third opinions, or you were in a position where they didn't know what the hell to do? So they all had to, like, kind of come together and figure it out because it was so rare. Yeah. Or both. um, When I was in the hospital, I got opinion after opinion but you know it's the doctor saying hey I don't know what's wrong let me call this other doctor let Mm. me call this other doctor I I gotta tell you this and to all the women listening you can I want you to scream into your listening device right now I had one doctor tell me it's just because my boobs were so big that's all my problems oh my my god (laughs) I'm like I've lost 80 pounds in three months I'm pretty sure it's not the boobs That's insane. I seriously yeah. can't believe the shit that comes out of their mouth sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes it's like, how did you pass med school, man? I know. I don't even understand. And now, like, dealing with the legal aspect, one of them called me on my cell phone. I was like, you do realize we're, like, in a legal battle right now, right? Begging oh me. God. Begging me not to go after him. He has children at home. Like, that's not my problem. But, yeah, yeah it's just. This in- was my life. Yeah, you ruined it. And but, so I felt like the care I got was okay, but yeah, there was a whole lot of, wow, we've never seen that before. You don't know what to do now. Yeah, so, I feel yeah, like that's the thing. they did two work in tandem, and it wasn't. I, you know, I was so sick, though. I was in the hospital, so they all kind of came to me. And then when they couldn't care for me, they'd send me to more advanced hospitals. Yeah, that's so crazy. I'm sorry you went through that, but here you are feeling so much better. And this is why I love bringing people on, especially for the professional patient series, because rare stories need to be talked about even more. There are so many things. Let's just take Facebook, for example. How many times in a week do you see somebody post something medical related and you're like, oh my God, and you just shake your head, right? Like they're about to go down the path I went down, even though it's a completely different situation. So I feel like as somebody that's you know, we've gone through it. It's our job, however we feel comfortable, to share, to just put it out there and just help other people so that at least maybe relieve some anxiety or something because going well, through. Absolutely. It, and it's life changing. It yeah. is absolutely life changing to go through something. I mean, yep. it changes who you are, it changes what you like, it changes what's important. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it really is life changing to go through something like that. So, yes, I absolutely believe it's important that those people, you know, reach out and let, you know, let you know you're not alone. Because, yeah. like you said, when you're in a hospital bed, I don't know what prison's like, but I wonder. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not much worse because there were so many times I was, I felt like I was literally chained to the bed, even though it was machines with IVs yeah. and all that. It was just, there was no moving on with my life. I was stuck. 
it's so funny that you said prison because I like we rec- we were mentioning um, having a conversation earlier before we hit record about us being on um, well myself being on lockdown. I'm on day fifteen, I think, and. Yeah. I recently have been recording a lot of episodes about PTSD and trauma. And it, this morning, I it's so funny because when you were just saying that, I literally visualized myself like dreaming of the ocean again. I was in Las Vegas when all of this happened to me. And I would be dreaming of like, I just want to go to the ocean. I just want to go to the beach. As soon as I got discharged the next week, once I was feeling better, I came here to San Diego. And then two years later, I, moved, I ended up moving back. So I've been here almost two years. And now I feel the same because the beaches just got shut down. So I can't even go to the damn beach for my sanity. So I'm only allowed to go outside and like do a lap around the neighborhood, keeping my six feet distance and come home. That's it. So it's crazy when you go through something. Like, do you ever have like any anxiety or depression or like PTSD, like anything that triggers you just from going through a journey like that? Oh, tons of things. Oh, yeah. This is a funny one and, and uh, ironic, but hospital hand sanitizer. That smell. Oh. That smell will take me back yes. to that torturous time in an absolute instant. It is shocking to me. I completely forget. I've moved on with my life, and then I'll get a whiff of that smell at the doctor's office or something, and man, it'll just take me right back. And, um, That's so yeah, funny you that, said that. That's an interesting. I feel like that smell, so my friend was admitted for um, an infection in, when was that? A couple months ago. And I was there all seven days she was there and they had so much sanitizer. This is before anything coronavirus even was in the news. The smell of their sanitizer, I feel like was the strongest ever I've smelled. And it smells like morphine to me. And it smells like... Whenever, do you remember when they would have to, um, like flush your pick line to make sure it like works properly? That's that taste. Yeah. Of the saline would taste like morphine to me, a morphine drip. I specifically remember this like very alcohol pungent. I completely agree with you because your mind, you're just like, oh my God. And even now, because I'm using so much sanitizer and alcohol to like wash my hands and everything, I'm thinking of, I still have my port. I still have like, and, I, and I'm like, what is going on? It's so crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, just certain things. And that, another, you know, what, what the most shocking thing to me was, was once I was better and really better, I mean, mm-hmm. I had healing to do, but there was no fear of death or anything like that, it was like accepting that I was going to live. Yeah. I remember the first time I got to go get a haircut because, you know, I was pretty shaggy after a year in, in and out of the hospital. And, yeah. Um, I, and she goes, hey, would you like to make an appointment in six weeks? And it just blew my mind. I'm like, how can I make an appointment? I don't know if I'll be alive in six weeks. And I went, oh, wait, I can plan. I can plan my life. I can do what I want. And it was so different because for like a year, I, I mean, I was either in the hospital or in bed and there was no traveling. There was no work. There was no absolutely nothing. And so it was such a shock to start replanning my life again. Like I can make an appointment in six weeks and, and know that I'm going to live for it. It, it was weird. I, you know, very happy and blessed, but it was shocking. And I was surprised at how hard it was to adjust to life again. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And honestly, half the time, just from being on so many prescription meds and chemo, my memory is shot. So I always have my list. I always have, and you know, that app called Time Hop, and it tells you all your social media reminders from like years past. That's when I remember something. I worked through a lot of that because I was going to lose my mind. You know, I was stuck in bed half the time and I had clients, thank God. And I was just doing like their website and social media and coaching them on LinkedIn. And they were all so supportive. And I'm like, I'm curled up in a ball. Like, I can barely even text you. They're like, it's fine. Like, you're good. <laughs> but I don't remember that until I see notifications show up on my phone. Like, I just blacked I, out so much of that. And luckily, I'm 10 years out. And so it's amazing how much you do forget after yeah. 10 years. You know, you're like, wow. You know, I'll, I'll forget the names of certain procedures. And I, and I actually oh, yeah. feel really blessed. But it's been so far. They're like, wow, I don't even remember. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh my God! So, now were you on a lot of? I had an Excel spreadsheet to remember what medicines to take IV, what medicines to take oral. What you know, I literally had to print out an Excel spreadsheet. Other, there was no way to keep track of. That, that was your attorney. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I didn't have an Excel spreadsheet, but I did have it on my computer, my notebook, my purse. I had a medical ID. My closest friends knew where to find everything. Then I had to do my will and then like all that dramatic stuff. So yeah, you definitely have to... I preach this all the time. Like you have to be organized with your records. It's up to you to be organized with your medical records because God forbid something oh. happens. And what happened to me one day, it's so it's crazy. Yes. Yes. And I was in the freezer aisle at a supermarket and the lights reflecting, I had a dizzy spell and I almost passed out, but it made me dizzy. But I thought this was the day I was going to go blind. This is the day and I'm stuck in the freezer aisle and I'm like, oh my God. And that, that day I went online and I designed my <laughs> designed, I designed my beautiful medical ID tag and I knew that I needed to get my shit together. And that from that moment and still when I go in the freezer aisle, I like, always remember that and then I'm just like stop for a minute and I breathe and I'm like I am so lucky I'm so grateful I can't believe I can just like skim by this damn aisle now and go get my frosted veggies or whatever and not like think I'm gonna die yeah we we reflect on a lot of that stuff like you know we have the kids and we take them on vacation yeah for years we didn't go anywhere unless we knew where the hospital or the emergency room yeah you you have to plan because you never know Mm -hmm. and it's so fascinating because when you don't do that anymore you don't notice you don't do it anymore you just all of a sudden one day you're like hey I don't even think I've had to go to the hospital for like three years I can't remember this is amazing I love that you just said that because going back to the endoscopy I just got I was freaking out because I'm like when was the last time I had a procedure and I had a friend come all the way from Santa Monica who's the cousin of my best friend who was with me throughout all my chemo stuff because she's very strong and I needed a strong well I was freaking out because I realized I didn't have my port anymore and this was the first procedure I had without my port I'm like they're never gonna find a vein I'm not I'm gonna be wide awake I'm gonna feel the camera down my throat I was freaking out and I didn't realize till the day before that this was the first time I'm getting a procedure without my port and that's what like triggered me and I was like a hot mess express but then after I was like high as a kite and laughing hysterically like everything was fine and dandy after that (laughs) but same thing with you both yeah. physically and mentally with facing death like that oh and yeah seriously ill that's that nobody really seems to talk about yeah but it's like it it really changes who you are and how you look at the world it really does have you ever done emdr therapy i have not i actually did ketamine infusions and that was the best thing ever oh my gosh i can't believe you said that maybe this is how we connected so i had a guest on tamra and she's an anesthetist in texas and she runs a clinic she has her own clinic now ketamine clinic that that, i'm telling you like you know after all this i i always struggled a little bit with the depression and ptsd yeah Um, i hated it i hated that side of me i hated that it existed but uh it's there and so i tried all the different antidepressants and everything and i finally just broke down and went and had the ketamine and i'm telling you just do it just do it it is hands down the best thing i ever did And you know what? And it's so funny that you're saying that. And I was not fully aware of what it was. And when I had her on the show last year, I mean, she's been a nurse for years. She worked in the OR for years. And she's just like, I see this as such an opportunity to help so many patients. So she ended up just opening her own clinic and she's helping, you know, hundreds and thousands maybe now with ketamine. And I was just so unfamiliar with it until after. Now, were you on a lot of prescription medication that you had to get weaned off of, like I was, at once? And the majority of it, I was off, except for kind of damage control medicine. Yeah. Um, they had me on a massive dose of um, Neurotin from all the nerve damage I had from the antibiotics. Oh, yeah. And, um, and then antidepressants and stuff like that. And so I actually did the ketamine before I weaned off of those. Oh, my God. That was probably the yeah. smartest thing you could have ever done. <laughs> Me too. And I remember meeting with my primary, my psychologist, my psychiatrist, because they were in charge of like lowering all the doses, getting me off. And I was on 12. So I was doing 12 at once. I couldn't take it. I was like a crazy person. Like I had migraines. I had to be in like a dark room for four or five days. I mean, it was a freaking nightmare. And now looking back, it's kind of just like a blur. But I remember at that time, it's just 
I remember reading articles because, you know, you're always looking at the next patient, like re- doing research and the documentary Heal had just come out. And I remember oh. hearing this woman say she was on the same med I was on. It took her a year and a half to get off it. I was like, oh, hell no. Oh. So from that mo- moment, I cut my doses in half and then I took myself off everything in like two and a half weeks. And it was supposed to be a lot yeah. longer. But at that point, if you're somebody and, you know, I'm not a doctor, but this is just my personal journey I'm sharing. And I was over it. And I'm like, I, I'm not going to die. There's no way I can die now. You know, I just want the shit out of my I, system. <laughs> I'm more invincible now than I was at Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, if the good Lord hasn't killed me by now, he ain't gonna. <laughs> yeah. But like in our minds, like as a patient. It's kind of like common sense where you're thinking, okay, if I have a month to take this pill, like, why wouldn't I just, like, double it and take half? You know, like, if it were okay to do something like that, like, you're going to pay for it with withdrawals, but, like, wouldn't you rather have less time for that shit going in your system anymore? Like, that's how I feel. So that's what I did, and that definitely wasn't maybe the smartest I can say now because I suffered hardcore from that, but it's not a year later. I'm not still taking five milligrams of some pill and continuously putting it in my system. I'm trying to flush all that shit out now, like a year later, three years later, four years later, it's still in my system. Like there's only so much you can do to like get it out, you know, you just gotta wait. Yeah. Well, and I feel like, you know, I was raised that you just do what the doctor says. If the doctor gives you pills, you take the pills and, yep. and, and doctors are the end all know all. And now that I, I, I'll call myself a grown up, although it's yeah. not my favorite thing. Um, <laughs> Uh, I realize for every pill you take, you may get some good reactions, but you're also going to get some bad. And so to me, I only resort to medicine when it's just like I cannot find a way to deal with something on my own. And we're very small because our bodies will heal on their own. Yep. Now, our bodies will correct themselves on their own. Now, obviously, cancer and things like that, that's not true. But if we're just patient and kind to our bodies, they mm-hmm. are um amazing machines and and the doctors just don't always know everything and i always felt like they really really downplayed side effects i'm like hey like i'm drooling on myself and i can't remember my name oh yeah it might slow you down for a little no my iq has dropped 80 points i can't spell what is wrong with me oh well that's the medicine you know i've, I've had some crazy side effects from medicines before and i felt like the doctors never really truly warned me how much it would impact my life and so I just like I said if I get an infection I will go get an antibiotic hands down but outside of that I really shy away from anything unless it's really serious yeah it's I I'm in the same boat with you and I 100% agree with the side effects nobody says anything so Uh two years ago no it was like a year and a half ago I went to the dentist I had all my insurance switched over here I'm in a new state and she says Kelly you have dry mouth I'm like what the hell is that and she's like you have no saliva and I was like what she's like did you know this like can't you tell and I was like no like I don't even know what that means and she's like because you were on all these drugs you no longer produce saliva I'm like what so she gave me this like $50 toothpaste and mouthwash I had to use it every single day to like give me saliva back and that was a side effect I, from one of these drugs I had that same one I remember having to buy all the expensive mouth lozenges and toothpaste and yeah I had no I, idea like, and then yeah, I was like, maybe I just don't take the medicine and then this is the best part of the story then I woke up I mean well mentally woke up because I was recording a podcast one day and I couldn't stop spitting and I was talking into the mic like I wasn't recording with a guest it was just me and I could not stop spitting and drooling and I was like oh my god I think I overdosed on the mouthwash or something and then it was like it was like a wake-up call I'm like holy shit I have saliva Highlight of, that's the highlight of my life, you know, like stupid stuff like that. You're like, oh my God, wow, it's back. <laughs> well, see, and my biggest concern was if they're not telling me about the little side effects that are annoying throughout the day or whatever, what are they not telling me? Like I found out, you know, for a while, I think the Xanax or what are the benzodiazepines they use oh, for yeah. anxiety. We know those cause dementia. Oh, no yeah. one ever told me that. Now, I don't know that I wouldn't have taken them. You know, back then it was yeah. matter, more of life and death than maybe things are right now. But it's like, I wish somebody would have at least told me so I could have made that choice. Yeah, I agree. Nobody tells you anything about the drugs. And honestly, I don't really no. think that they know because it's not their job. They know what it's for. 
but they're not going to school to learn the drug. I've learned more from CVS pharmacists than doctors about drugs. Wow. You know, that's probably my biggest pro tip after all of this is go find a good local pharmacist. Yep. Not, not you know, because my my pharmacist has probably saved my doctors from killing me yeah. a million times. Yeah. Because a lot of times they don't cross check meds. Even if you tell them, look, I'm taking this, this, and this, they'll prescribe you something. And if your pharmacist doesn't catch it, go, hey, you can't mix these. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to go home and mix it. And yeah. so that's what I'm going to die. Pro tips is, <laughs> oh, find somebody that knows and cares about you as a pharmacist because they can save your bacon. I'm telling you. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. And that's happened to me so many times as well. And I'm just like so grateful. And you know, half the time it's like a young kid and mm-hmm. they catch it because that's what they're going to school for. So it's like constantly on their mind, you know? Yeah. Now, talk to yeah. us about all of your products and the company that you have now and the craziness you're experiencing at this very moment due to coronavirus. <laughs> so we bought the farm. I'll finish up my story where we yeah. off. We bought the farm and I um, started making these cleaners. And my husband would say, uh, you need to sell these. And I said, uh, I have a doctorate degree. I am not going to be that creepy guy going door to door going, hey, I got a cleaner you want to buy. Yeah. <laughs> Push the cleaners. It took him weeks, weeks to convince me to start selling the cleaners. But we were already going to the farmer's market every Sunday to sell our eggs and produce and peaches and things like that. So I thought, okay, all right, I'll make a few bottles just to see if anybody will even buy them. Now, you got to remember, I, I was a lawyer. I was not in manufacturing. I was yeah. not in baking. I wasn't an idiot. This was not my forte at all. So I was, you know, dollar store bottles and, and homemade labels. I can't believe anybody even bought from me. But after a few weeks, I was actually selling more cleaning products than produce. And so I thought, well, maybe we should give it a go. And uh, eventually we started selling out and went to shows. And within two years, I was on the Home Shopping Network. I've actually been on twice. And um, it just took off because when I invented these products, I had two rules. It had to be 100% natural, completely safe, and it had to work better than what I was already using. And, yeah. and I hate cleaning. This is the ironic thing people do. They think, oh, you make cleaning products. You must be the neatest person. No. It's called <laughs> Shabby Chick because I'm a hot mess and I hate yeah. cleaning. I absolutely hate cleaning. Oh, my God. I love cleaning. <laughs> so I want my cleaners to do all the work. You know, the kind you just spray and they do it. Yeah. That's even better, though, <laughs> for a product. I at my house. And so we, uh, so that was it. It's I, I um, you know, eventually it started with just a cleaner. Um, and then my husband started having allergic reactions to every laundry soap I tried to buy. So eventually, I, I learned you could even make laundry soap. At first, somebody told me that. I thought, no, you can't make laundry soap. That grows in stores. But it, it turns out you can actually make it. <laughs> and, um, I started to, and again, it started selling. And, uh, and now I have a whole entire product line. And um, the philosophy behind every product is that it outperforms the one I thought was the best. You know, like, uh, and so, of course, I have a hand sanitizer. And so I am the most popular lady in town right now. I can tell you that I have not worked this hard since I started my company four and a half years ago as I have. Oh, my God. And now you're bringing it full circle, helping everybody else. (laughs) Now, only if you had some toilet paper, some rice, some beans. Yeah. Along with the cleaning products, like, you know, toilet paper and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I just, I didn't want to get into it. I thought it was going to be too much a hassle. And girl, I regret that every day. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you would have had a new house built by next year with the toilet paper trends. It's absolutely insane. I know. Oh, my God. I, I'm happy with the hand sanitizer trend because I know that we're putting out a quality product that's going to protect people. And yeah. And cleaners are just some of the most amazing on the market. We've had all kinds of testing and clinical testing done on them, and uh, we outperform leading brands. So that was that was always nice when we'd get the testing back to go, huh, I did it. <laughs> That's so amazing. But, yeah, and, we don't, and one of the big things, especially if you're suffering with any kind of disease, really almost anything, is dyes and fragrances can be the most harsh on your skin and your lungs. 
and everything. And so we absolutely never, ever, ever use any dyes or fragrances. We only use essential oils in our products. That's so good to know. And a lot of people always do ask that. Now, where can everybody find you on the internet? Where can they buy their sanitizer? Because I'm pretty sure everybody's out yeah. at this point. <laughs> shipping the same day monday through friday and we are at shabby chick cleaners that's chick c-h-i-c-k not chic <laughs> shabby <laughs> chick cleaners and that's plural dot com and then uh, obviously we have a facebook and instagram store and those are at shabby chick cleaners perfect and you guys all of this will be in the show notes so it's just a simple click away You can stock your family up on some good for you products. Amber, thank you so much for being on today's show. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Sharing your story. I love what you're doing and I, I think you're helping so many people and I just think it's amazing. Thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate it. I'm going to let you get to back to work because I know you are so crazy busy right now. So I'm glad this all worked out. I am. I am. Thanks again. Your time is so valuable and I really appreciate you carving out a little piece of your day to listen to today's episode. If you liked this one, please share it with someone who you feel needs to hear this message. And don't forget to tag me at The Happy Workaholic on Facebook and Instagram so I can feature you on my stories. Listening on Apple Podcasts? I would love it if you would leave me a review on today's show. Your input means so much and also helps me create more of the content you'll love. Want to continue today's conversation? You can join us in the Happy Workaholic Network Facebook group. Simply answer the questions and you're in. For more information on myself and to get the latest in business, LinkedIn, organizing, and podcasting news, sign up to receive my weekly newsletter at thehappyworkaholic.com. I hope that your day continues to be happy, healthy, positive, and productive, and I'll talk to you again soon.